Hello everyone, I'm Nina Flemings from the Danida Alumni Network team, and I'll be your host for today. Some of you might recognize that I'm speaking to you from the DFC Cafe, and on behalf of everyone here at Danida Fellowship Center, I am absolutely delighted to extend a very warm welcome to this first Knowledge in Action talk, entitled, How to Make Your Business Idea Reality. And thank you to all of you who've already shared your names and where you're joining us from. It's great to see so many of you with us today. And I'd really like to encourage those of you who haven't yet, please do pop your name and the country that you're um, joining us from today in the chat. And if you'd like, you can also maybe share a link to your LinkedIn profile as a way of connecting with other participants today. So this session is being live streamed on DFC's YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn pages, as well as in the private Danita Alumni Network um, Facebook group. So whatever platform you're joining us from, if you do have a question or a comment for us or the facilitators during, during the talk, then do feel free to type it into the chat, then it will be shared with everyone and we'll do our best to respond during the course of the session. Now, without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to our expert facilitators for today. And that is, of course, Sophie Hammersko and Rasmus Bert Larsen from DFC's partner, Segis, a leading agricultural knowledge and innovation center here in Denmark. Sophie and Rasmus will be taking us through how we might turn our business idea into reality. And we will also have the great pleasure of meeting two Danida alumni who have done exactly this. And that is Margaret Miano from Kenya and Matteo Osorio Tamayo from Colombia. Now that's enough from me, I'll be back later. Sophie and Rasmus, it's over to you. Well, thank you very much, Nina. Hello and welcome to all of you. I'm uh, Rasmus Berg. This is my colleague, Sophie Hammersko. Hello. And we are so pleased to see all of you. We are, as uh, Nina mentioned, from SIGES, which is a leading knowledge and innovation center for the Danish agricultural and food sector. A short introduction of myself. Normally, I work a lot with innovation projects. I, I work with uh, business development, with SMVs, and also a lot with DFC, where we are running uh, international courses, for example, and course on innovation, entrepreneurship and value chain. And Sophie? Yeah, I would actually like to start with a quote. I'm fam famous for these uh, quotes, uh, Rasmus. Um, and the quote for today uh, is uh, saying something about today and is relevant for today. The quote is that if you want to go fast, go ahead and uh, go alone. It's the fastest. But if you want to go far, go together. And this is some of the main element of actually uh, our advices, our recommendations in how to actually bring your idea to life, out to reality. And uh, it's also uh, very much to the approach uh, I'm working when I'm working with developing organizations, business and people, developing uh, companies from small scale startup and also the large companies, how actually to do it uh, together to have the same direction, this, uh, the good involvement and, and the good way in the different things. So uh, yes, my name is Sophie Hammersko, and I'm very pleased also to uh, uh, come through with some of the experiences and knowledge on this uh, topic about entrepreneurship and innovation today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Rasmus, I know you have a story in the pocket. Yeah, I don't have a quote, but I have a story, a personal story, because the topic of today, I have worked with it myself. A few years ago, I tried to be an entrepreneur myself. I tried to be innovative. Together with some friends, we wanted to start a business where we reused old uh, wood material for the industry, for example, pallets, and we would try to make them into furniture and sell them to a higher market. And as often as many other startups, we failed. Unfortunately, we didn't succeed. And the reason to do so was that we didn't have the right market knowledge. We thought we had the production in control, but we didn't have the right ma market knowledge. And that is one of the whys for today, because I would assume that many of you sitting out there have a lot of ideas you had. You have an eager to be entrepreneurial, to be innovative. But how do you make this into reality? How do you make your business idea into reality? That is the topic for today. Perhaps you have an idea which can change the world radically. It can be a radical innovation. You can change the society, your organization as whole. a very big idea. Or perhaps you have a small idea where you can make some incremental innovation where you can optimize and adjust and do things slightly better today than you did yesterday. And that's perfectly fine. It's all innovation, it's all entrepreneurship. And that's also whether or not it's on product side, if it's on the service side, it's all innovation. Many of you have been uh, on the DFC courses, not all, but many, and there you have worked with your action plan. There you have tried to make an idea and put it into reality. 
And as uh, what goes for action plans also goes for startups. Some of them fails, unfortunately. And if we look at why do action plan and startup fails, if we start to look at the top 20 reasons for the startups to fail. We had the same fail here as we did ourselves. No market need. Often companies don't know, startups don't know the market well enough. They lack the knowledge and they don't know whether or not there is a real market need. 30% around ran out of cash, meaning that they had the ideas, they have the capacity, the competences, but they didn't have enough money. That's also very important to have enough uh, liquidity and to have the right partners so you're well financially funded. And one fourth didn't have the right team, meaning that perhaps them, them they sell were a good entrepreneur, but they didn't have the right team. They didn't have the people involved to make this a success. And if we look at the action plans, most of the action plans, of course, succeeds. I think it's around 80% of the action plan that succeeds, but still some action plan don't succeed. And that's perfectly fine. When you're innovative, not everything goes right. If you really want to be innovative, you have to fail sometimes. And if we look at the evaluation of the action plan outcomes, we see a quite similar picture here, actually. We see one third of the reasons to fail is there was a change in the organization focus, meaning that the organization changed its focus, its priorities, its perspectives, and thereby the action plan or the idea was not relevant anymore. And that is one of the things we're going to dig down today, how to get your organization on board. We see uh, one fourth had the same problem, lack of funding. They didn't have the uh, sufficient amount of money and financial equipment for this. That's also very important. So you need to have a business model and you need to have the right partners on board to make sure you have enough financial resources. Also, a lot of people fail because they are not specific enough and they're too ambitious. So when you want to make this a reality, you want to make it to a success you have to be ambitious, of course, but don't be over ambitious. You need to make things simple. You need to make things specific in order to succeed. And that we will dig down into when we talk about the implementation later today. And finally, also changes in environment. Of course, many of you are sitting in countries with forward threes and a legislation, sorry, that will change throughout the time. You need to be aware of that, but we will come back to that later. So this is the why of today's session. Yeah. Sometimes you fail, but today we will try to see, can we help you? Can we provide some concrete tools and topics so you don't fail? I actually have another quote for that. Yeah, Sophie? Failure is not the opposite of success. It's a part of it. Exactly. Yes, but even though then these failures and these typical uh, reasons here, uh, what can be difficult uh, is also what we're going to touch uh, upon uh, to give you tools to today. Maybe not completely avoiding it, but to handle them, to handle these different uh, risks here. So Rasmus, this is why you are talking about. Uh, let's let's uh, dig further into actually uh, that uh, regarding the program of today. Mm -hmm. Uh, because let's actually talk about the why and the how and the what for today uh, in the way of coming through the program here. So hopefully the why is clear here with the need, as uh, Rasmus, he mentioned uh, and talked about. That's a hopefully clear why for you, why to, why to spend the, this time together uh, today to avoid some of these uh, failures here uh, and getting tools uh, for that how today. Uh, we have the approach uh, to go, to go to it to, with a very practical mind. So we hope that uh, you're with us uh, on that. Uh, it will be very uh, go-do uh, tools uh, here and approach we will have today. So um, how actually you can maybe start with some steps uh, tomorrow uh, of uh, maybe uh, bringing further uh, ideas uh, into, into reality. And maybe speaking of starting tomorrow, maybe even today, we would like you also to think uh, here uh, actively. So um, we will have some small questions and small exercises for you along the way. Uh, and uh, we would recommend maybe to take a piece of uh, paper and a pen so you can note down also physically and not just having everything uh, digitally here over the screen. So be active uh, in uh, converting some of this we are bringing into your project, into your situation and challenges, 
And also, uh, as Nina mentioned in the, in the start, be active on the chat, uh, write comments or questions uh, along the way. Maybe you can even now start to write some of your challenges, speaking of these reasons Erasmus was mentioning. Maybe some of them are very relevant for you. But uh, that was uh, the why, the need, and the how. How is the process going to be today? And Rasmus, speaking about the what of today. Yeah, because the why, the need for today, we're clear on that. There is a need to learn how to make your idea into reality, your idea and your business into reality. The how, we would like you to be active. We will have a to-do and we will be practical in our elaborations here. And the what. The what. The what. We will be very specific now. I've just told you that's important. So we will have three main topics for today. The first topic is the golden circle. So we will elaborate on that, but that is in general how to get your organization involved, how to find a passion and a why. That's one of the what's for today. So after that, I will dig into the business model canvas and the business model canvas you can use to visualize and design a business around your idea. It's very concrete, it's very specific, and hopefully it's a tool that you can use. And finally, the last element, the last and I think the most important element is you can plan, you can design, you can think, but you have to implement it. You have to go from idea to reality. If you don't implement it, you don't bring, you don't create value. So implementation is the last topic of today. So there will be these three main topics with concrete tools. But what I'm also personally looking very much forward to is uh, the joining of the two alumnus we will have, Asmus. Yes, yes. because it's not only Sophie and I who are going to talk today. We have two alumni with us. First of all, we have uh, Matteo from Colombia, who will talk about his golden circle, the purpose of his action plan. And we will also have Margaret Miano from Kenya, who is going to talk about her implementation, her experience and challenges. So three topics. Two alumni, and we only got 90 minutes. So, Sophie, yes. I think we should just get started with the first topic, the golden circle. I think we should. I, we hope you're all with us out there, and uh, don't hesitate uh, to use the chat uh, to interact uh, with us and with each other. But the golden circus, circle is actually what we just were framing here, the why and the how and the what. And the Golden Circle is a model uh, developed, a quite simple model developed by a guy called Simon Sinek. You can maybe even call him a guru. He's uh, an author, uh, have been writing five books, and one of the books is called Start with the Why. And the reason here is that many companies, they know, uh, most companies, almost everybody knows what they do. What is the product? What is the service they are providing? What is it that they are producing or giving? Some companies know how they do it. What is the approach? What is uh, the ways they do it, the process in it? What is it which is unique for them in, in this approach to it, the how? And not so many companies actually are communicating the why, the reason they are actually doing this, the reason they are producing or servicing or the reason they, that they are working on this idea here. What is actually the reason? What is the belief? You can say the purpose. You can also call it the mission or the vision, but it's actually just easier to say the why. Why to do it? Why to have people engaged uh, with you? Why, to have, why, why should customers uh, or users use your uh, product or your service? Start with the why. So he's saying you both have to act and think and communicate from the inside and the out. So starting with the why in it. And uh, this is a very strong tool to both uh, develop uh, your business, but also your organization to have the core uh, fixed and the core ready, because that can help you in prioritizing also the different ideas you may be getting when you're an entrepreneur. Should we do that or should we do that or should we do that? But having the core right, what is our core? Why, why are we here? Why are we existing? Then you can actually easily prioritize and you can also easily target your users, customers, and you can also easily involve your organization. So it's a simple model, but it's very powerful. Uh, and let me just give you an example of, uh, of the power of it. Uh, this is especially when we're talking uh, into the organization here and the reason for knowing why to do things. This is a picture here of uh, two men. They are each of them are doing the same work. They are cutting stones. A small boy, he walks up to them and asking, hey, what are you doing? And the one guy is answering, I'm cutting stones. And the other guy, he's saying, I'm building a cathedral. 
They're doing the exact same work, but you can easily imagine, you can almost feel the different approach and the different attitude, the different mindset, the different emotions that these two guys have when doing it. For sure, the guys who knows that he's going to be a part of this cathedral and he can show his grandchildren this cathedral. Of, of course, he's more committed, involved, and so forth. Many research shows that if we're emotionally in involved and committed, we are much more both productive and loyal to what we're doing. We go through much harder challenges if we are emotionally committed. Um, so he's, he's probably much more motivated and engaged, and maybe he's also doing his work in a better quality because he knows what it's going to be used for. So do not forget to communicate the why for yourself, for your organization, but as mentioned also for uh, users and customers, the why is very uh, powerful in this regard. And just to underline with also numbers here of the effect or the impact of, of why here. And my origin is um, originally a management and manufacturing engineer, so I like numbers here. Here, it was a, a little a research here where some nurses had to uh, put together a nursery uh, kit here. They had to put all the things into the box, being ready uh, to be sent out to former war zones. And the test was here that uh, some of them just got short introduction, do like this, 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 this. And uh, then they had four hours to assemble uh, these uh, kits here. And they could assemble 38 uh, kits in these four, four hours. But taking it down to the very bottom of it, then there were a group, they both had the visionary talk, meaning they were explained why is it important? What are these boxes helping? Where is it going out to? So the whole uh, perspective to it, the whole why uh, to it. And then they were also having a process about them, themselves putting words to it, themselves saying why is it important? They actually almost doubled uh, the amount of kids sampled per four hours just because that they had another way of being introduced to this task than just go and do it or actually the time to explain the why in it. So the why is extremely powerful. And I would actually like to give you a, a task now uh, to you uh, sitting there out in many places of the world. It's so great to see the chat coming in uh, from hello from many, many places. Um, and I would like you maybe to take that if you have a piece of paper or somehow note for yourself uh, the golden uh, circle here in it. Uh, but before, you should have a little example, because these are many big and nice words, but I would like to go through an example of actually a golden uh, circle. So an example before an exercise? Yes, and then, but you can start thinking already. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, because besides being a management and manufacturing engineer and developing small and larger uh, businesses, I have uh, made a small entrepreneur uh, project uh, as I lived um, some years in, uh, in Ukraine actually we made a Danish way kindergarten out from a personal need but we also found a larger need in the community in the country for a Danish way uh, kindergarten and let me use this example to actually simplify and uh, go through the model uh, here so um, it's called be kids and the what here is is often the most simple one and we often start with that so let me just clear what is the what in a kindergarten there are kindergarten places for the kids uh, from zero to three years from three, uh, three to six years and so on there are different sessions different activities excursion parent talks english speaking and so forth these are the products that they are getting so, but then that's that's not what makes us unique many many people can do like that and we are not followed for that people follow us because we have something special around us we have a belief here and this is a belief which the parents of the kids feel but it's also a belief that the team feels and they do not have the highest salary or the best conditions and uh, so forth but when we're talking about why are we actually having a danish way kindergarten in ukraine they they you can see in them that they are emotionally touched by this one their why is that our why is that it is to build up stronger kids for changing tomorrow being able to change tomorrow of ukraine and many people in ukraine would like a better country would like a better uh, system would like many things they want to be uh, have better and many and many parents want some a better future for their kids another childhood for their kids than, than they have so they so much feel this and this is why i also draw the heart here because when you're going to formulate the why you have to have the passion into it this is what people follow people do not follow what you do people follow why you do it and apple is the same people do not follow 
people do not buy Apple products to get a, a good uh, phone or a good computer. They follow Apple because they have a passion here. They have a passion of challenging status quo. This is their passion. This is their why. And then they have how are they going to do it and what are they going to uh, do, uh, provide and so forth. But the passion here lies in the center. And that is so important, the core to have right fixed here. And a couple of examples on the how is the Danish way, it's a home atmosphere, it's learning through play and so on. This is our process, the approach to things. So um, I would actually like uh, to challenge you uh, a little on to actually what is it could be your why here. Uh, try to write a, a piece of paper and the model is so simple, you can just draw it on a, on a clear piece of uh, paper. Try to draw, draw these uh, three uh, circles and, um, and think for yourself. Maybe, maybe maybe start with a few words on on the what. That is so easy. What are we doing? Ah, oh, it's a, we are having a, an app, or we are making fertilizer, or uh, we are uh, uh, running a bicycle uh, uh, reuse center. This is some of the what. But why are we running a bicycle reuse center? What is it we want to give? Is it some people we want to move? Is it some conditions for people we want to change? So, uh, so try it now for yourself, uh, and uh, I would like maybe to see in the chat some examples maybe of uh, the why and the how and the what uh, you have uh, on your product, uh, on your business, in your organization, um, to just uh, a few examples uh, of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So write it down mm -hmm. together or alone at home mm -hmm. on a piece of paper mm -hmm. and put it in the chat. Yeah. And uh, while you're starting to think here, um, the whole approach which, which we're coming with, it, it doesn't need to be perfect. You don't need to, when you're making this model, then is it exactly the how or is it the why here? Just go ahead and try and do and put something uh, down for yourself. What is your why? It doesn't need to be the perfect formulation, building up strong kids for a better tomorrow, because that formulation might come as long as you go. But maybe just some few words is something about building up kids it's something about changing future, or it's something about uh, providing mobility uh, for uh, urban population in uh, South uh, Africa. It's uh, something about changing uh, the condition uh, for the local farmers just nearby. So the reason why you're working on your idea here, and a very small example to it could be, imagine the uh, case that uh, I'm asking you, Rasmus, uh, can you uh, uh, send me that full report uh, before the end of today? Mm. And that's actually quite a huge task for you, and you're having a lot of other tasks on the desk, and you're thinking... Uh, I'm not that highly motivated. You're not that highly motivated. No. I'm just giving you the order. I'm not building the cathedral for Rasmus here. But I could also say, Rasmus, I've just been contacted uh, uh, by an organization which are ready to make a partnership with us and fund us with a lot of uh, good finances for our project. But we need to simply have something to send to them today. Do you think it could be possible somehow to have something ready for them with these and these different elements here? Then maybe we could get the next year funded and having a good partner. And thereby I would be... Uh, at least I would be more motivated because I see the purpose, I see the why of it. Yeah. So that's a good example. Yeah. But should we perhaps give a few more minutes yeah. just to uh, grab a piece of paper and a pen, mm -hmm. draw it yourself, write it down, what is your why, how, and what, and then put it in the chat. Mm -hmm. Should we give them four minutes or something like yes. that? Yes, and if you have some questions also to this, how actually to start with this, or what do you actually mean by why or how or what, you're also welcome to put it uh, in the chat and we will follow it uh, a little. Hmm? So let's see who are going to be the first one who actually makes it writing down something in the chat related to the exercise. Yes, because the ones who knows us from the DFC courses we are running, it's not a relaxing time when, <laughs> <laughs> when we do these courses. We really like when we are uh, active together and interactive together because this is where we start to move. When we're not just sitting and receiving, but we involve ourselves. We have a large, larger commitment, but we also have a, large, a lot better uh, understanding of, uh, of the things we are hearing. So mm. try to, to just uh, put a few uh, things in, uh, in the chat. Give me some examples of why. You can start with the why. Yeah. Do we have an idea? where you have some highly motivated uh, arguments for it, or where you have some strong beliefs in it, do you have some a real clear purpose in one of your ideas and projects? Yeah, and uh, actually shortly we will hear from also uh, one of the alumni on his why in it. Mm -hmm. 
what is actually his why uh, with, with, with his uh, idea here. Yeah, but I think um, it's a, it's sometimes it's a, it's an easy task, and sometimes it can be it can be uh, something you need to consider a little if you didn't consider it. And this is also Simon Sinek's point that many companies, many organizations, and business they know what they do, and uh, we have to try to go into the core here. When when we know that what we are here for, we can much better prioritize the focus. And as that was also one of the main uh, elements of. Um, uh, of, of these uh, typical failures that losing the organization focus mm. uh, and uh, and the organization maybe change focus here yeah it's one of the when we're running the courses one of the most important things we're trying to work with is how the participants can empower the organization how it can involve the organization mm. in order to make the, the action plan or the project idea even stronger yes but I see we have uh, the first input here from uh, Ronnie hello thank you Ronnie his why is reduce time taken to see a medical provider. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Yes. I think there is, a, if you read between lines, I think there is a strong why here. It's very important, I guess, and would assume that you don't have to take too much time to see a medical provider. When you need it, you need it properly fast. Yes. That is perfectly and, fine. And I would like to give you a little uh, advice or a tip here even to it. So if you have that first why in it and you want to have it, deeper and you should of course not go too deep or too high up in the helicopter so it becomes too general but you can maybe ask one more time why uh, so uh, why is that actually important to have reduced uh, time taken to see a medical provider what will that help what will that feel like why is that important that is that that, that is maybe uh, um, uh, saving uh, people's frustration and maybe more will come to the medical provider because that they will not feel uh, so much uh, time spent on it and more will come and in better health condition people will be so you can actually roll the why by asking why a couple of times mm. to your why and then you have an even deeper uh, why to it yeah but good example and um, and thank you uh, for that one I think actually we will more or less uh, be ready to now hear also uh, Matteo's uh, example. Yes, because we have uh, invited a former participant of one of our courses, Matteo from Colombia, on our course on innovation, entrepreneurship and value chain. And the reason why we have invited Matteo is that his idea, his action plan, the project he uh, would like to work with has a very strong purpose. Mm. It has a very strong why. So he have, uh, he have developed a very fine golden circle here with a strong why. And I think we should try to hear Matteo. Are you there and are you ready to present your golden circle? Hello, Matteo. Good to see you. Hello, too. Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me here today. I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs> Great to see you, Matteo. And just for everybody, while Matteo is speaking, maybe that also helps you uh, think of what is your why and the how and the what, and put it in the chat and uh, let's exchange uh, while we are also hearing Matteo's uh, example to it. And you're also, uh, of course, welcome to write comments or questions for Matteo along the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But Matteo, could you elaborate and share your ideas, your reflections on your, your action plan and your why and the purpose of your project? Okay, sure. Okay, uh, as Sophie mentioned before, uh, I have the mindset where you can go faster by yourself, but far with if you go to uh, with someone together. So for that reason, I have this idea in my mind where this NGO project, which name is Farmers Together. Next slide, please. And this idea comes to me because I was thinking uh, right now in my country, just to give you a little uh, framework without what is going on here in Colombia, we are going through the peace process. So right now we have to uh, think in some ideas to build this social fabric that is so important in Colombia. So the reason that I think in this idea was because I want, we want to empower farmers in growing their business together, thinking as a team, working together with the communities and fields related with the agriculture by empowering the farmers' knowledge in specific crops. Because we have in Colombia a huge potential in specific crops that I'm sure that uh, if we can export this 
fruits or vegetables to the to the world they are gonna love it as well and how how this idea is uh, transform the the life of the farmers we want to offer them tools related with agriculture financial and environment advisor with the purpose of creating strong associations capable to transform their raw materials in very innovative products as well and how are we going to make it? Our funding will be come from international partnership, such as international aid from developing countries or organizations that support non-profit initiatives in the area of the agriculture of the development process of reconstruction of the social fabric. And what? Because I think in the, in the way that uh, be a non-profit organization provide service in agriculture matters that help farmers. That is the only uh, um, idea that I'm thinking, help people. And for that reason, uh, we want that the intention of the farmers uh, start to create an association or companies that accomplish their goals for the common benefits in their cities or towns. What, what we offer, we offer networking, training by professionals in finance and agriculture management, and the use of precision agriculture. And as well, purchase of ma ma machinery with financial aid by, by our NGO. And that's why I, I'm thinking in this great idea to help the people to, to reveal this social fabric that is so important right now in our country. Any questions? <laughs> Thank you, Matteo. And I think it's a really strong, the purpose here, the why of your idea is, uh, is very strong. And because I get that you, uh, in your country, you have challenges, you want to reunite. And I like the idea that you have taken Sophie's quote, if you want to go yeah, far, sure. you need to go together. And therefore you need to aggregate and collect and mobilize all of these farmers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, also that uh, just uh, the name of your project, uh, Farmers Together, Matteo, is also quite well chosen and, and saying something about your why in it. And also what I like when you are describing it, um, you, you are when you're talking about the why in it, you're also talking about uh, the frame, the need in Colombia for it. And that's also very connected to the why. So the why is very connected to the need and uh, for, for, for what, uh, what is it solving? What is it helping and why is it relevant? Uh, so I, I think it has a very uh, strong attachment uh, to the need also, and that's and that's an element of uh, of having success that it's it's uh, put up and hooked up on on, on the need on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Matteo, I have a question for you. When you were on the course and you first met this golden circle and the importance of setting up a purpose and and a why, what did it give you? What did you contribute uh, from it? To organize my ideas because you know when you have um when you start to when i was starting the course uh and i start to see how can i make my ideas uh, in come true in a reality i have a lot of uh, storm ideas in my mind but i didn't know how to organize it and then with your explanation and all the topics that i get from the courses i start to uh, create this uh, process and step by step uh, try to make it. Mm -hmm. So it's also a way to organize your ideas. And I love that you could also use the model and the theory to that as well. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, on a on a more personal side, how can you use this why and purpose in your in your everyday life? In my personal <laughs> goals as well, <laughs> because yeah. you know uh, sometimes you you want to. Um, achieves some goals but you see the ways in a difficult um, or difficult moments in your life but if you have your ideas clear in a some kind of organization or diagram diagram mm -hmm. so it's, it's better for you to achieve your goals so for the reason i'm in, uh, in fact in my personal goals because i want to make a master and go on in in this uh, innovation ideas i think is a good uh, tool for for you perfect because i think it's a very good point that i myself is also motivated by the why and the purpose 
as well as Matteo here. And if Matteo and I can get motivated by it, Sophie, you can use it to motivate me as a colleague. Yeah. So you yeah. can use this, you can really use this to get your organization and your colleagues on board. Yeah, and, and also, so very finally, to connect to actually the need uh, for the users, uh, the persons you're going to do this for. Mm. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Matteo, to this. Uh, some last uh, comments from you, Matteo, before we, we take many good comments I can see rolling in in the chat also, but Matteo, some final words from you to your colleagues here around the yeah. world. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing here the comments. I don't know if there is any question from there that you want me to answer. Uh, I think they're mainly putting in, they got inspired uh, to write in their why and their yeah. how and their what. So I think, uh, Matteo, it also brought them, uh, made them active <laughs> from your example here. So, okay. Matteo, thank you very much for that. You're very thank welcome. you very much for, for joining. And you will stay tuned, you will hang on. So, uh, so also yeah. being here for the rest of the session. Mm. Yeah, I think sure. just a short applause to you, Matteo, and that. Lee from here. And very nice to see you again, Matthew. So before we head over to Nina for the break, yep. Sophie, I can see the chat is almost pouring over yes, with comments. I'm just, I'm just uh, looking into the many things coming in here and what to highlight uh, from it. Uh, for example, a, a Maya, maybe uh, you're called that uh, to provide quality and innovative education to kids with a focus on 21st century skills. There's also uh, some good uh, purpose in that. Uh, Cecilia, I saw an interesting one for you. The why is to make people able to live out their full potential. And when you're just saying that, you're getting curious and thinking, mm. what is that then about? And that's actually about Power Nap Hostel. So communicating the why is also actually making, uh, making uh, you curious. So what is it that, they, that they're doing? Uh, and um, Frank, you're writing uh, about your project about uh, producing uh, sunflower seeds and some of your house, and that is to do some training. And that's also a good example uh, of, the, of the how in it. Mm. So many good uh, examples here of uh, how and uh, why and, uh, and what. And simply keep them coming. Yes. It's perfectly good. We can good. use it throughout the session. Yeah. And I think uh, this was uh, the part before the break here. Mm. We will take a break now. And Nina, back to you. Thank you, Rasmus. Thank you, Sophia. And of course, a big thank you to Matteo for sharing his inspiring work that really got us all going. Um, so thanks to all of you for also sharing some really uh, deep and meaningful whys um, around what you're working towards. We're now going to take a, a little break. Um, so see you back here in five minutes.
Hello again and welcome back. In this second part of the session, Sophie and Rasmus will be taking us through the business model canvas and Anita Alam Margaret Miano from Kenya will be sharing how she has used this exact tool to get her business idea off the ground. Exciting. Rasmus, the word is yours. Thank you. But Sophie, will you introduce first of all? It's just because I want to say now we're at the business model uh, part, uh, but actually uh, we have just been receiving so many things uh, in the comments here, many different examples of the why and the how and the what, and keep it going. It will inspire each other to actually come closer to this golden circle model and use it as your core, as Bateo said, for actually organizing your focus uh, and your different uh, actions to it. But back to the business model canvas, Asmus, actually, what is a business model canvas and maybe why a business model canvas? I'm glad you're asking, Sophie, because now we're going to dig into the business model canvas. And as Sophie asks, what is the business model canvas, you may wonder. That is the first thing we will answer. So, hang on. The business model canvas, well, generally, you can say the business model canvas is a strategic, managerial, and entrepreneurial tool. So with the business model canvas, you can describe, you can design, you can challenge, you can invent and improve your business model. So it's a very visual chart, and we'll get back to that later. You can see how visual it is with elements that are describing the value proposition, the channels, the infrastructure, the customers, the economics of your business or your idea. So you can say if you have an idea with the business model canvas, you can try to put it into structure. You can put it into a visual thinking. And that is also one of the key things because it's easier to communicate to your colleagues and your organization. So why use the business model canvas? Well, first of all, if you already have a business model where you are at the moment, if you already work in the organization with a business model, you can use it to map the existing business model. So you can visualize and communicate in a very simple way the story of your business model. You can also use it to design brand new business model. If you have an idea for a business or an, or an organization, you can use the business model canvas to explore these business models. You can use it whether or not you are a startup or whether or not this is an existing business. So you can use it to design business model canvases. You can also use it to improve your business model with the business model canvas because it's very easy, it's very intuitive to use. You can get your colleagues on, on both, you can get your stakeholders on both, and there you can use it to improve your business model canvas. And finally, if you have more business models, if you have more uh, organizations or more departments, you can use it to manage a portfolio of business model. So you will get an overview of how are our business models intertwined, how are they dependent on each other with the business model canvas. And before I forgot to say that the business model canvas and the theory about it is uh, developed by Alexander Ostervander a few years ago. One of the great thing here is it's all online, it's all free. So the templates here, the information, the data, and so on, you can get it all online and we'll share the material and some link. But if you just Google business model canvas and Alexander Osterwalder, you can see all of the material. Sophie, I know you have a, a quote. It's not copyright, it's copy please. Yes, so that's that, the trend coming. That's the trend. They're very more, they're, they're very welcome to share the material. So that is what is the business model canvas and why I use it. The next part here is actually the business model canvas itself. And perhaps it's a bit unclear. I know Jacob will just share the screen, but you can see it consists of nine building blocks in general. Over to the far right, we have the customer segments. Who are your customers here in your business model canvas? You can use it to segment your customers. In the middle, you have the value proposition. What value do you deliver to the customers? Which problem are you actually helping solving? We can see over to the right in the middle, we have the customer relationship. What kind of relationship do you want to have with your customers? And how would you reach them? That's the channels. What kind of distribution are you using to get out to your customers? What kind of marketing are you using to get the customers to know you? If we look at the left side, we have the key partners. Who are the key partners in order for you to succeed? Not very, much, not very often you can succeed by yourself. You need to have some key partners. You need to have some key activities as well. What are you actually doing to make money? And you need to have some key resources. In the bottom, we see the economic 
part of it here. We have the cost structure. What are the major costs that are driving this business? We have the revenue streams. How are we earning money here in this business model? So with these nine building blocks, you can use it to describe your business idea. You can use it to structurize it, to formalize your business idea. And even though it might seem static and might, might seem as a scheme you need to fill out, it's important to say this is not static. It's very dynamic. One of the key things is it's very visual. So you can actually use it to play with. You can use it to involve colleagues and stakeholders. You can think, perhaps I could change this. I could improve this uh, customer relationship. I put on another post-it. And actually, that is what we're going to do now. Because we have made a large scale business model canvas, which are coming in the frame here now. Speaking of visual. Speaking of visual, yeah. Because we would like, we would encourage you to print it out large to have some post-its and try to make your own business model canvas. You will not have the, the time to do it today, but perhaps you can use it with your colleagues. And actually, to help Margaret and Maggie, I will make some of her business model canvas for her as a favor. So Maggie's uh, challenge, as she will also mention later, is that she's working with smallholder farmers in Kenya. And today they have a challenge because it's hard for them to go to the market without being exploited by middlemen, and corruption because the, the, the distribution channels is not that good. So she wants to make a commercial hub that solves this issue. And if you just jump into the business model canvas, remember on the right side, we have the customers and you always start with the customers, always the customer. You need to put the customer first. And I would argue that the customer here in Maggie's case is the local smallholder, smallholder farmers. That is the one that she, are, those are the ones that she is creating value for. She wants to make the everyday life better from the smallholder farmers in Kenya. You could also divide them and segment them. Furthermore, you could say the ones who are producing a rage seed, the ones who are producing uh, milk, uh, cow, beef, dairy, and so on. You can use it to segmentate your customers. So use this one to really get a good idea who are your customers here. Once you know your customers very well, you can move on to the value proposition here in the middle. And remember, the value proposition is on what are the pains, the challenges that your business idea is solving. In uh, Maggie's example, uh, one of the pains for the farmers, for the customers, were that uh, she would like to reduce the pains. And that was there was no stable market, there were no stable sales. There were middlemen, there were corruption, and the, the farmers didn't have the right amount of knowledge and education here. And sometimes the prices weren't fair. So what we want, what she wants to do is to reduce the farmers' pains by creating some stable sales. She wants to cut out the middlemen, she wants to cut out the corruption, she wants to provide education and knowledge, and she wants to provide fair prices. And the way that she's going to do it is to create a commercial hub commercial hub where you aggregate the corn, for example, you aggregate the products, you collect them all, you pack them and you link them and you distribute them to the market. Thereby, if Maggie succeeds with aggregating, packing and linking the producers with the, with this, sorry, the producers with the market, there will be a stable sale. There will be no middlemen. There will be education and there will also be fair prices. That is, I would argue, my, Maggie's value proposition. And just two more now before we move on. Sorry, we don't have time for it all, but you can see more online. Some of the key resources I would say for Maggie is, first of all, human, human resources. The knowledge here is very important. It's the persons, it's the people that are driving this business model. Also, the facilities, because she wants to aggregate, she wants to collect a lot of grain, a lot of beef, and so on. So you need to have the right facilities here and also the network. The network is important here. You need to know the farmers. You need to know the market to link the market and the farmers. So the network is important. And finally, the key partners. I would argue in Maggie's example, that some of the key partners at least are the producer groups, the groups of producer who are organized in unions or something like that. It's one of the key partners. Also uh, the local authorities, the government and so on, also key partners. Perhaps they would like to support this in order to raise 
the livelihood of the farmers. The, the retailers or the marketplace, at least, where you're going to sell it, I would also argue, is the key partners. So you can see here we're trying to begin to visualize, to structure a business idea where you want to help the life of the farmers by making a commercial hub and provide uh, knowledge, provide a stable sales, education, fair prices. And once you start to work all of this out, you will have your own business model canvas. Mm -hmm. So a quite useful uh, model here for having an overview and maybe also to communicate out to uh, partners and so on. Exactly. And speaking of partners, then uh, Rasmus, I know that you have a little task again to uh, activate you uh, sitting yes. uh, behind the screens. Because you are so good in uh, turning in with your whys, your hows and your whats, I will ask you to do an exercise again, a bit simpler this time. But if you have an idea, you have a project, I would like you just to write in the two most of perhaps the three most important key partners here. So in your idea, in your business, in your project, write in the chat who are the most important partners here. It can be partners you maybe already have or potential partners you maybe should uh, consider contacting or getting on board as, as we often see that this is uh, also some of uh, the reasons why not to succeed is that you forgot to involve more than just you. It's not very often you can do everything by yourself. And I know Maggie will dig into that later on, how mm -hmm. in her implementation it was important to get partners on board. Yeah. But if you have some key partners in the top of your mind, please put them in the chat. Then we will discuss them here in Plano. Yeah. So Rasmus, that's one of the nine uh, elements here on this uh, on this uh, on this model here. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but usually we're starting with customer segments, but you have that in place, we imagine. You should always start with the customers because otherwise you will make the same mistake as I did. You will not know the market. Mm -hmm. You won't have the right amount of knowledge of the market. So mm -hmm. start with the customers. Yeah. So even though we normally read from left to right, we actually have to force ourselves in starting in this part of it. As we do sometimes in uh, yeah. Asia, yeah. But now the partners, maybe some partners you already are working with or some you could consider contacting. Mm -hmm. It can be as a large partners or it can be small partners. Exactly. Yeah. But I think uh, meanwhile you're thinking and uh, perhaps putting in the chat, mm -hmm. I think we should move on to the next topic actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because uh, we had now the golden circle and we had uh, this model. About, so we have uh, talked a lot about how to design mm -hmm. and plan and visualize your idea, how to get your organization on board. But you need to go from idea to reality. You need to implement this. Yes. And that is the most important step here, I would argue. So implementation, Sophie. Yes. The, expect the expectation is high now. Yeah. The most important topic of today. But I love this topic. Mm -hmm. It's really a go and do uh, topic here. And, uh, you manage, Rasmus. I manage. <laughs> With our little wall here. Yeah. Um, so. Um, so we, we're going to talk about implementation now, and uh, now we are coming to the meal uh, part of it. Uh, so I actually put a, a fork and a, a knife here, uh, because as Asma said, we did some planning. You could say we did a recipe maybe of the cooking, and now we are actually going to, to start uh, with the dinner here. We're going to, to, to start implementing. And the main things we're going to talk about here is engagement, it is team, and then it's a uh, project overload and uh, simple steps to maybe avoid a uh, project overload. Um, if you are receiving, well, if you're asking for the material and you're receiving the material from this uh, session here today, you will also see a template of an implementation plan. So we'll have the golden circle, we will have the business model canvas to simply design and think through what is uh, your concept uh, consisting of and how to ensure it. But this is a plan of how to then uh, implement it. And I'll not, I'll not go through it uh, step uh, by step in small details here. It's quite intuitive, but I'll mention some of the highlights in it, some of the points, some of the maybe do's and don'ts when we are implementing. Very much connected to what Rasmus said uh, in the very beginning of the typical uh, failures. And uh, a consulting group called Implement, they have actually visualized the whole journey of building up a business, uh, going from idea to business in a very uh, simple way here by a rocket. A rocket going to fire up, hitting for the stars or the moon. And there are different steps in it. And you probably know some of these steps uh, and you are maybe on different places of it. You could be in this discovering uh, phase of uh, what is the customer problems, what is it we're solving, 
You could be in the generating phase where you're designing the solutions, you're making the roadmap and so on. What is it? How are we going to do it? What are we going to produce? Maybe you already launched it. Maybe you're already out there. Maybe the app is uh, put uh, out uh, on the app store and so forth. If it's an app you're designing, maybe the first bicycle is purchased. Maybe the first fertilizer is produced and you have launched it. So you have the first version of your business. You could also be up in growing a business, scaling it up. So these different levels, phases of it is what we go through when we go from idea to actually uh, building up a business through it. But the two main points here I would like to put focus on today, and maybe why more than 90% of our innovation, uh, corporate innovation, it fails uh, implement group is saying, is the why and the team and the process. So I just highlighted these uh, two elements here. The why we already touched, I'll touch it again. The team and the process we also spoke about, and we'll touch it again with some specific tips and tricks here uh, for now. So the why, remember this cathedral, it's so engaging. It is a strong, strong power for this rocket all the way through to all the challenges you will go through that you know why you're doing it. You know what is the light of the tunnel. You know the reason uh, for, for putting this into the market and the customers, the users know the reason of, of why to use this one here. So really put attentive to the why and to, to, to stress that one. Have the clear cathedral. Those people see your cathedral in it. And a way to do that, a little tip and a trick here, which we had very good uh, success with in our courses for DFC, is to build a mood board to somehow modeling, to somehow be creative about what is your why. So maybe not so many words, but cutting some papers, building something in Lego, doing something uh, where you actually are using your hands in formulating what is this all about? What is this we are giving? What is this we're coming with? That's a very uh, involving process and it creates a lot of uh, clear uh, emotions in your uh, why. So a little tip and a trick here. Another part, so the why here is, is on this uh, part here is uh, remembering the purpose uh, and, and the reason you're doing it up here in this box here on this implementation plan. Another box is who are involved. Is it just you as typical entrepreneur that we try to do everything ourselves, we invented the idea and now we are just running uh, full ahead because it takes time to involve other people. But if we are not taking that time, we will, we will just go fast and we will not go far, as mentioned from the very beginning. Because as an entrepreneur you have to handle so many different things and uh, different competences. Uh, one of the most important things when you're going to build this um, team that you have Think about, we often tend to find people like ourselves with the somehow same competence, the same profile, but really try to uh, not just find a copy of yourself, but find somebody who compliments you, who are maybe really good in detail uh, and really good in getting the finances on board or who has a lot of networks, which you don't have. So really try to think in complementary uh, team here, both for the like, a close team you're working with, but definitely also for the partners, which Rasmus is mentioning, find somebody which complement and which builds your idea stronger to it. Yeah, so if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. That's put on black and white. So we had the big dream now. We had maybe the mood board even of giving some more emotions to what is it we're doing? Why are we doing it? We had the nice formulation. We had the big concept of the business model canvas with the different elements we have to take into consideration. And maybe now the project seems quite big, quite large. And where should we begin? And here Simon Sinek, the guru from the Golden Circle is saying, dream big, start small, but most of all, start. And it's very this approach generally in the implementation part here, try and do, try a little, put a little out, test it with somebody and then go further in it. And that's also what we saw in the evaluation. Start small, be specific, be concrete and there's a higher probability of succeeding. Yes, and many also saying start with what you have, start with what you just have and try it a little. Uh, actually, also as an engineer, we often tend to sit a long time at the table and plan and plan and plan. But let's go and test a little along the way. Let's put it out. Let's get it out to start uh, working and get some feedback from the users and the colleagues and so on. Feedback is really important here. So speaking of most of all, then start. First of all, start. How to need an elephant. We are back to the knife and the fork here. So 
this is maybe the big dream, but it's about very much about one bite at a time. It's very much about chopping it down to smaller pieces. And one of the reasons for that I'll uh, give to you by showing this uh, research here, this small uh, uh, case here with a, a, a supermarket selling uh, glasses of jams. They're selling a lot of other things, but also glasses of jams. One supermarket had a test a view, you know, where you can come up to and taste it with only uh, six glasses uh, here shown on their desk. Another supermarket had 24 different uh, jams uh, standing in their uh, showroom. And many visited it and uh, actually uh, more visited the place where uh, they had 24 jams. But if you then look at how many bought it, then actually 30% bought a glass of jam where only six glasses were standing and only 3% could take a decision where they had so many choices, so big complexity of 24 glasses. So it's just say that we really have to reduce complexity. Our brain cannot handle so many decisions and so many different ways in it. So the more you can make these steps, these processes simple and specific, the better in it. So a quote, problems can be complicated, solutions cannot. It is simply the way our brain works. If, we, if things are simple, if they are easy, if they are small, then we're doing it. If we hear the word new, big, complicated, sensors on our brain have shown that the place where we have a headache is activated. When we hear these words, we do not want to use these resources as human beings. We are saving the resources for the things which is simple, easy, doable. So really, when you're going to put an implementation plan and over here on this side, it is your actions, it is your do's, it is your steps in it. Think in small steps. The smaller and the more specific you can do it, the better chance of you actually coming through with it. And people can overcome this step because it doesn't take them a long time to understand what the step is and it doesn't take them a long time to do the step. So rather small bites of this elephant than uh, uh, one big bite. That's one of the main elements in implementing. So this one you have with the purpose. Remember the purpose, the why, the engagement, the team, the complementary team in it, and the simple small step uh, processes and steps uh, in it is my advice in implementation. Mm -hmm. Yes. So strong advice is here on implementation in the end. Yes, but keep it simple. Keep it simple. But that's not easy. Hmm? Yeah. So now we got some recommendations from us on how to make an implementation plan, how to plan for it. But I think we should try to hear from the real, real world out there and from Margaret. Yes, that would be so interesting because so, you are going to speak about challenges, Margaret. Yeah, and we have invited Margaret. She's also a former participant of our courses because not only has she made the planning and the implementation plan and designed it and so on, she has actually done it. So she has went from planning to implementation plan to implementation. And uh, Maggie, I can see you online now. Hello, Maggie, good to see you. Hello. So Maggie, I have shortly introduced your business model canvas, at least as I remember it were. I hope I'm not completely wrong. But Maggie, I hope that you will share some uh, reflections, some experience, but also some challenges in terms of your implementation. Great, thank you for having me. You're welcome. Maggie, the floor is yours. Thank you. I'm making a presentation on Pegama Farm, a rural trading and learning commercial center that is based in the lower eastern region of Kenya. I am the founder of, uh, of, the, of the business uh, with uh, two of my friends, uh, one who is also a Danida, one who is also a Danida alumni, Dr. Gashango, and uh, the other a financial expert. The challenge the business is uh, seeking to address is the lack of uh, market for the market access for the smallholder farmers, insufficient quantity and poor quality of produce, as well as poor storage facilities and the exploitation by cartels or the middlemen for, by, for the smallholder farmers. So in our business model, uh, some of our key partners uh, that we are working with is uh, those that are strategic partners along the value chains that we are in. And these are financial partners. We have the input supply. We have technology service providers. And the most important are the producer organizations. 
So the idea is that we are working through producer organizations where we aggregate produce, uh, we move to the uh, storage facilities, and in the storage facilities is where we package and distribute to our key customers who are the institutions, urban eateries, as well as homes. Since the, the, the last time that we had uh, our business established, that was in last year, we have had quite a bit of experience. Um, most importantly is that we learned to be dynamic and allow the idea to grow organically, being patient and allowing uh, things to, uh, to flow. Just keeping it basic, starting with what it is that you have. Initially, by the time we were, uh, uh, we were on the course, we had um, the idea of golden grains, which was trading in uh, green gram but this um, has uh, so far been diversified into trading of fruits grain and we already have a piggery unit that is up and running the other thing is uh, focused on a circular economy model uh, so basically we are turning the waste uh, at the farm uh, into resource from the, the bio uh, from the piggery unit we have uh, set up a biogas plant the biogas plant is uh, generating energy for cooking and the unit uh, the piggery unit is also learning uh, being ran on uh, solar energy the waste from the biogas is also being used as manure on the farm um, most importantly is to also handle the projects independently. These are three enterprises in one. So it is important. Okay, so I think we have some connectivity issues from uh, Maggie. Maggie, can you hear us? Okay, but uh, actually, I think. Uh... Oh, Maggie, you're back. Good to see you. I think the connection was just lost, but you can just uh, continue here. Perhaps turn off your video. If you turn off your camera and just keep the sound. It is so amazing with these online uh, sessions here, we can be together from all around the world in just uh, one snap. And sometimes, of course, we have some connectivity problems, yeah. but I think, Margaret, we can hear you now and you can continue. Yeah. Um, I think uh, from uh, probably the focus on circular economy, we're turning yes. waste into resource. Mm -hmm. um, where we have, uh, uh, from the piggery, we have uh, the biogas uh, unit, we have the waste from the biogas uh, uh, been used as manure on the farm and the biogas is used for cooking and the, the uh, piggery we also have a solar system that is running. Uh, the other is handling the projects independent of each other where then you're able to reflect on uh, the viability of uh, each enterprise, keep uh, document the growth, keep the records. Um, the other is also to analyze and um, the business risk thoroughly and have mitigations in place and also share your business vision with your team. Some of the challenges that we have um, experienced in um, uh, running the, uh, setting up the business uh, was the difficulty in financing um, startup projects amidst a pandemic. Uh, in Kenya, we've had uh, prolonged uh, lockdowns and this has uh, affected the movement of people and goods and hence the business. We've also had a bit of productivity risk, inconsistent uh, feed quality uh, for the pig, uh, the pig feed. Uh, we've also had erratic weather where we had complete loss of crop uh, for the green gram in the last season. At the piggery, we also don't have consistent water supplies and hence we have to buy the water, which is really a costly uh, resource, but we are now um, focusing on water harvesting. Uh, there's also unfavorable business environment in Kenya, where we have very high punitive taxes, making it very prohibitive for startup businesses. It was not also easy to establish uh, reliable suppliers as well as partners, and also juggling between employment and setting up a business was not easy. Uh, the labor force was also a constraint in terms of getting reliable and trustworthy employees. What we are currently doing at the moment is uh, developing an integrated business model um, where we have all the three enterprises um, focus on. 
We are working on a website with a learning and trading platform. Here we have partnered with um, Digital Launchpad, a, a, pr a program by the NORAD, and we are sourcing for consistent water supply, uh, looking at having a solar powered uh, borehole on site. We are also sourcing for solar cold storage facility uh, for the fruit uh, uh, value chain and also integrate, uh, installation of an integrated management control system. Uh, this will help um, uh, monitor the business uh, since all the three partners are not on site. And then the other is uh, identification of strategic partners. These are advisors, mentors, as well as investors. And we are currently um, resource mobilizing just to ensure that all the components of the business are up and running. Thank you and over to you. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you very much. Again, very nice to hear from you again with this uh, amazing project and idea that you're working with. And Margaret, as last time we spoke together, we are still so amazed that even though you have your professional work, you do this on the side, you can say, can you put a few words on how do you manage to do both? Mm -hmm. Um, I think uh, what is important is um, setting up a business around something that you're passionate about. And this again uh, will give you the drive to keep going. Also keeping a network of people who are um, encouraging you to keep moving has also been very resourceful. And I'm grateful, especially to your team because you are always engaging me. And every time um, I'm, we're going slow on the business, then we get ourselves back on track and we greatly appreciate this. Perfect. So the why and the purpose is what driving, uh, what's driving you as a person as well. Mm -hmm. So Margaret, we are sitting uh, more than 50 people here. What should your main recommendations be to those who want to implement a business idea? Where, what are your main recommendations? One is to start small and uh, like you had just put in the quote, you must start. Uh, having an idea is not good enough, but uh, putting it out um, is important. Then always let your business idea be organic. Don't be very stuck on um, what you've put on paper, be what must work. As you hit the ground, you will realize that the dynamic will change. And so it is important that you allow uh, the business to organically grow and be flexible to just adjust um, uh, to start the business. But most importantly, start and learn as you grow. Margaret, thank you so much for these uh, advices here. And I know that you have had this mantra all the way uh, through since we, we met your first time in the in the DFC course and also start with what you have. Uh, there has also been some of the things you have been saying. So I think a big hand to you, uh, Margaret, for, for enlightening us on your uh, way here with, with your uh, action plan and passion. Yeah, let's yeah? give a big applause. Thank you. Thank you. And um, actually, uh, guys, we are more or less uh, coming to uh, the end of uh, what we had of the input uh, to you, the input uh, about uh, from the start, the whole uh, why, the reasons, the typical failures we see in entrepreneurship and innovation, we see when we are going from idea to business. And then this zooming out on the golden circle, actually getting your core right, what is it you're here for? What is it, as Margaret is saying, your passion is, and uh, the whole way of organizing that as Matteo also was mentioning and in a very structured way using the business uh, model canvas element to actually have an overview over did you consider the different parts here you need to have in order uh, for, for actually doing this uh, so Rasmus we are, we are coming to this uh, part where we can now dig into the many comments and uh, questions mm -hmm. and also if there are more comment and questions uh, along uh, the way and a little time for actually reflecting and uh, and looking into uh, what different challenges do you stand with what different questions do you have now for, for you actually to proceed uh, further on and um, Rasmus we had one uh, in uh, here that you would like to comment on yeah first of all because we have a question saying um, in Africa when we think of innovation we have the poorest poorest of the poor in mind a big challenge we face is providing for their basic need for free what advice would you offer, for example, a community based on organization dealing with pertinent issues? So I would say, uh, first of all, it's a really relevant question because often or sometimes when we think of innovation, we want to make it for the better of perhaps one of the poor. And it's a good, how can you say, challenge. It's a strong challenge that the basic needs for the poorest, they don't have enough money, don't have enough resources to work with this. 
So a, a recommendation from here, because I cannot solve it, solve the problem or the complex issue from here, but I would say start involving partners. When you have a community, when you have something where you want to perhaps make something for free, you want to help the poorest, the basic needs, it's always a good idea to involve some partners in here. See if there are some local authorities, some local companies, perhaps some organizations that you can help, where you can help each other. Try to sit down and brainstorm. How can we help these kind of people? That would be my, my first answer to, the, to that. And it's a complex uh, question as well. Yeah, and we had actually one of the previous participants working with something similar of actually uh, taking uh, old bicycles and, and repairing them and, and making them uh, for, for people to, to use in that uh, area. That was also very much about connecting with people and partners. And here you really need the why, the passion can really take you a long way. If people tap into this passion, they feel a part of building that cathedral together with you. It's a really strong uh, communication tool also. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can think we have some more also something with, uh, regarding uh, agribusiness. Yeah, I can see we have Ivan from Arusha in Tanzania. Or mm -hmm. I've actually been in Arusha, Tanzania. Nice mm -hmm. to see you, Ivan. He's asking, are uh, you interested in, in agribusiness innovation and precision agriculture? Uh, first of all, I would say uh, agribusiness is what we do here at Segas. We also work a lot with precision farming. So feel free to contact us if you have some questions. But in general, I would say you should also use this network that you are part of. Because I know we have uh, had uh, not only a few, many participants, also from Tanzania actually, working with agribusiness and precision farming. So perhaps you can use this network to see are there some local partners here we can try to hook up with, we can network with, because I know you're not the only one working with precision farming in Tanzania. I know Frank is here online. Perhaps, uh, Frank, you can reach out to Ivan or write your email in the chat, mm -hmm. and perhaps you can uh, connect Otherwise, even just uh, write to us and we will hook you up with uh, some contacts mm. here in Denmark at Sigis and also in the network. Mm. And many of you are writing still also fantastic work, and Margaret, and also many good comments to Matteo. And that's actually also very useful in your journey here, that you actually, as Margaret you also was saying, that you're actually having somebody who's interested in it, who's asking to you, uh, how is it going and so forth. And you can use each other for that. And there are plenty of ways to connect online all over the world and make small uh, networks where you can actually encourage each other just by asking, how is it going? And involving people in your organization that can also give you some of these applauses and somebody said well done Rasmus and then you grow actually a little from that so it's really great to see all these uh, applause uh, saying comments uh, you're putting here in the chat hmm. uh, there's also another one here uh, often uh, you yeah uh, Sophie I would yeah. like to ask you the yeah. question okay so uh, Cecilia is writing often you get a lot of good business idea but how do you know which one is good enough to start a business yeah it's a hard question it's a hard <laughs> question hmm? it's a hard question uh, I remember, Rasmus, from the ones, uh, from the typical failures you showed that the first one is the customer needs, that actually do you hit a need in the market uh, here, and that you will know by go and testing it. Uh, mm. You can also, of course, ask people, is this relevant for you? But they maybe ask uh, one thing and then they act another way. That's the thing about us human beings, that we have an intention, but we might act another way. So it's simply to go and test it. Will, will people actually use this if it's an app? Will they use bicycles? So start small scale, as also uh, Simon Sinek is mentioning. But then I would also say, of course, run a through the business model, is it a clear value proposition? And is the money in it? How is the revenue stream? And one of the challenges I often see is that as an entrepreneur, we get so many ideas. So try to really think about which one is focused on your core, on the why. Is it fitting to the why? Is it helping? If it's, for example, uh, to uh, fulfill the or to to release the potential of people, is that is that new idea? Is that also providing to that purpose, to that why? That can be a help in order to know which ideas is actually the right ones. So um, the need in the market, but also is it connected to the passion? And then, of course, also. The business in it yeah and and the, the easy answer is you don't know before you have tried it exactly so you need to get out, get out there try it and test it it's a very good idea try to see if you can make some pilot test or something yes mm -hmm. 
And there's the one here I like to focus on youth. Uh, Lian is writing, Lilian is writing, I would like to focus on uh, youth business ideas, especially young people. And you have really also a lot of uh, passion and uh, power possibilities in that uh, purpose uh, here. We also had uh, different uh, cases in the courses with the young, uh, mm -hmm. growing up uh, the young and, uh, and releasing their uh, potentials uh, in it. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I think it fits per perfectly well into your example of a golden circle also about the next generation providing taking care foster the next generation yes yes okay and rasmus i actually see also because uh, we, uh, we we jumped uh, quite quick uh, through this with the partners from the business world uh, canvas also some of you were giving examples of some of the partners uh, regarding for example transport that's also a really good idea instead of stretching your competences where you may not have them into transport and partnering up with somebody who knows something about logistics and so on mm -hmm. so so start with what you have and then use uh, other uh, competences uh, to go with it and don't be afraid of hiring and working together with people that are smarter than you that's always a good idea isn't it <laughs> <laughs> yes um but um i think uh, we are more or less uh, there's a comment here nice to have a danish model uh, business and whether it's danish model but it's very much to the approach let's go do it let's try it and start small uh, really thinking about the capacity of uh, of the brain actually um, this brain research is, uh, is saying that our brain did not develop, especially since Stone Age, so since many thousand years ago. But all the inputs we are getting today, all the different things we have to jungle up uh, of ideas and tasks and impressions and inputs and information and so forth, it has extended largely. So all of these ideas you have and all of the big plans you're making uh, within the golden circle with the business model canvas perspective really think about what is your first small next step and that's the task i would like to give to you here uh, at the end uh, to put in the chat because that's it's going to be your next stone in front of you to step on what is the first small next step you will maybe do it tomorrow at the latest on monday what could you do is it reaching out to this specific partner before when with whom so what and who and when are you going to do it try to formulate as specific as you can and put it here in the chat and inspire each other to to make specific next steps but again when you say it out loud you almost did it you almost did it. You maybe have somebody to cheer for you and asking you on Monday, did you do it? Because that will, the follow up part is a really mm. strong thing in actually converting this as somebody's asking, how is it going and helping you for the follow up on it. So now, before we will round off the whole session here, put in the chat, what is your first specific next step actually? Yes. So. Speaking of rounding off, I think we'll start rounding off today's mm -hmm. session on behalf here at Sigas. Sophie, if you should only mention one and only one key takeaway, mm -hmm. what should that be from today's session? Start small. Start small? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Rasmus. My own key takeaway, try to make it try to make it playful, try to make it intuitive, try to involve your colleagues. Get people you said along. one word. It's only it's only one <laughs> one recommendation, but get people along and try to be playful with it. You can use the business model canvas there as well. Yeah. Okay. So uh, all the material will be shared afterwards. Sophie, I think we should say uh, thank you very much on behalf of uh, Sigis. We are very happy to see all of you guys, to see how interactive you have been, to see how much you have written down in the chat with your comments, your reflections, your questions. That's so nice. So thank you very much for all of that. Mm -hmm. Sophie, any final remarks? I just uh, would love to see the different cathedrals you have in your mind, and hopefully you can spread it out to the people you're going to involve. And I already see some of you writing specific small next steps. The more specific you can make it, the better. So we just wish you very uh, good luck in these uh, small uh, next uh, steps uh, in front of you. And uh, you will have the material, and I think that uh, uh, Nina is ready to uh, give you some uh, further uh, details about that. Nina, over to you. Bye from here. Bye bye. Bye, and thank you so much to both of you, Sophie and Asmus. And of course, also a huge thank you to Matteo and Margaret for brilliantly taking us through this first Knowledge in Action talk. Wow, I'm uh, really inspired uh, from today, and I hope you are too. Um, I think one of my key takeaways will be something that um, Sophia shared and was also strongly echoed by Margaret's experience. It's the quote, problems can be complicated, but solutions cannot. 
I think that's really an excellent reminder um, that we most often really do need to keep things simple and small as we start working towards our bigger goals. Um, and another thing is, of course, that today's session has really made it very clear that having access to some concrete tools to organize our ideas, a bit like what Matteo said, it helped him organize his ideas having uh, using the golden circle. And of course, also the business model canvas in the way that Margaret has can really help um, accelerate your entrepreneurial ambitions. Um, so yeah, use these tools, apply them and go out and get started just as Margaret really advised us all to do. Take that first small next step tomorrow already if you can. I'm afraid this is all we have time for today. And I'm really sorry if there are any questions we didn't manage to respond to. So if you do have any unanswered questions, and also those of you who would like um, a link to the recording of the session and the presentation materials, please do email us um, at alumni at dfcenter.dk and we will uh, get back to you. And here at Danita Fellowship Center, we're now planning for our next Knowledge and Action talk. So do stay tuned. Uh, more information will be shared on our social media channels and also in the DFC newsletter. And of course, we very much hope that it will be back and joining us here next time. But for now, um, we'd like to say a huge thank you on behalf of everyone here at Danita Fellowship Center for spending part of your day with us. And we'd like to wish you continued success on your journey of turning knowledge into action. Goodbye for now.